I was six years old when I first performed on a stage. The spotlight that followed my every movement, every gesture, every step. It was never the lights or some love for performing, though that is something I have said in many interviews, professed my love for the art and performing it. What drew me in was how dark the stage was, how the only light present was reserved for me and only me, how the people sitting in front of me blended into each other, blur, but they strained their eyes to follow every movement of my arm, their direction my eyes would turn, and the roaring applause that would follow. When my mother first took me to dance lessons, I hated it. I tried everything in my power to escape those lessons. I scraped my knees on purpose, ran out into the cold weather without jackets, but she was a cruel woman. No matter how loud my wheels were, no matter how loud I would scream, no matter the intensity of the tantrum, I always found myself facing my reflection in the dance studio. Eyes red and swollen, nose filled with all the snot, I kept sniffling. There is no beauty in a tear-stained face. The reflections reminded me of it constantly. There is only my pain when I scrape my knees on the pavement. I would still have to bend them if the music demanded it. My protests ended very soon after these two realizations. I would silently put on my dancing shoes every evening at four, stare out the car window, looking at all the children playing in the warmth of the diffused evening sun, while my mother drove me away to a room of mirrors that never let me overlook the slight mistakes in my stance. The constant reminder of my mistakes was not the worst thing to happen in that tiny studio with wooden flooring. It was the broken nails, bloody toes, sore feet, the blisters. The high I got from my first performance did little to make me forget the pain of learning how to perform. I had felt my heart racing when I walked onto that stage first. I was not afraid of the people or the fear of forgetting. Just that there would be no mirror to tell me my stance was incorrect. I had spent so much time battling my imperfect reflection that I had become dependent on the mirrors to guide my movement. Almost as if I were a puppet and the mirror my puppeteer. Even after the performance and all the appreciation, I had not really understood the gravity of what that moment had meant for me. I just wanted to go home and play with my dolls. I had broken free. The moment I performed without a mirror, trusting my muscle memory to guide me to perfection. I had begun using the mirror much less after that, even dancing with a blindfold. It was great having that kind of trust in myself in my limbs. I found my dreams in my mother's dreams that she lived through me. To perform on that wooden stage in front of the crowd that sat in the darkness. To feel illuminated by my one true companion. The spotlight. 
the sweat mixing with all the glitter caked on my skin, making me shine like the sun. I felt like the sun, with the world revolving around me. But the thing about dreams is they are made of glass. They can take whatever shape you want them to take. They can be tinted with whatever color you want. Just like glass. Dreams are also capable of 